I suppose that I would have to say, okay, you know, if there's um, a situation that occurs that looks like this, then um, uh, there there could be no reason. Um, a mode. There could be no like justifying reason for it. Okay, and that's good. Think about how think about how hard it is to actually. I mean, the thing is, I think there's a sword here that kind of cuts both ways. Um, you're you're experiencing a difficulty in communicating to me what some people just find intuitive, right? Um, which is that there's obviously all this suffering that's unjustified, uh, you know, and and um, you can just. I don't think it's like that. You know, I have. It's already. Yeah, I've already told you. I would never take this approach. I've already said I would say specific things about like what sin is. I wouldn't just say evil. Um, but do you agree that there that people have an intuition about this that's hard to communicate to someone else who claims not to share it? Um, I don't mean to like interject. But can I just like get clarity on what the topic is? Financial problem of evil. Okay. Uh, Mo, are you there? You sit. Yeah, I'm here. What's up? What's up? Um, when you say they have a hard time keeping it to what, what part, like what evil is, what no. unnecessary is. Yes. Yeah. Specifying like how they come to that conclusion, like kind of giving a checklist to the other person to say, well, you need to check and see if, if this is the case and that's the case and the other thing's the case. And if these yeah, are, I already gave you that. I already gave you that analysis. Um, so let me, let me ask you something. Would you be a Christian if the, if the Bible never came into existence? If, if uh, there was no church, there was no church fathers, all the things about religion had been abolished and you never got any personal revelation. Would you be a Christian? Well, it seems less likely. I mean, it's a hard question to answer. How would you even understand what Christianity means? Um, How would you come I mean, to that there, belief? If, if there were a world like the one you're describing, and it existed, mm -hmm. right? I don't know. Um, I don't know what that world would look like. Right? I don't know what what sorts of like conceptual, I guess, like conveying mechanisms there might be instead of the things that you said we get rid of in that world. Um, mm -hmm. It starts to get kind of like tautological. How about I stipulate it? If there was no way for you to become a Christian, would you become a Christian? Well, no. No, no, no. I'm. Well, I mean, supposedly you might be able to just think your way into it. Oh, all that. Oh, I could just like have a random like thought. But you wouldn't have reasons, right? Other than like you just think that like you can imagine something being the case. Right. Um. What if you took the uh? What if you took the thought experiment and you changed it a little bit and you just said, "Would you be religious if uh, Christianity right. didn't exist?" Well, that's what I take for it. It's a mm -hmm. bit sure. Yeah, yeah. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that um, somebody else was talking. What'd you say? Go ahead. Oh, if you change the thought experiment like that, I think if you just look at uh, human history, right, um, you can say there's a pretty good chance that I would be religious. Most people have been. Thank you, dear. Did you say, do you believe in Jesus? It was really, it was real quiet. I'm, I'm picking up my daughter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no worries. Take your time. I'm going to get, I'm going to refill this cup of water. Just one second. So Joe, are you like a, a priest up or something? I think he is. It seems like it. Um, but what I do want to ask, um, Albedo is like, I, I heard you, you got to wait, bro. All right. I don't know who just joined. And it's silly. It is I. Uh, okay. I wonder if it turn, turns online. I'm back. Joe, are you a priest? No. Nope. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he just believes in God for like some intuition or whatever. Is that Jay Styles? Yeah. What's up? Yeah, what's up, man? What do you call you, Jay Style? Yeah. Sully. I just call you Moog. What should I call you? Jay. Sully, do you take a, a view on? Call me, um, call me Jay. Sully, do you take a view on like counterfactuals? Um, not like a specific view. Um, I'm happy to sort of be a contextualist about them because I think if they're used and characterized in so many different ways that. I'm not, I don't think there's like, this is the correct way to model counterfactuals. I think there's a bunch of different ways of doing it, but I guess, uh, broadly, like metaphysically, I'm, I'm a necessitarian, right? So I think that they're all 
technically counter possibles. So. Yeah, I mean. Okay, I'm back here. Uh, I, I well, you, you were could, telling me you. I, I don't know. If you yeah, want to... I want to know if you believe in Jesus. You're asking me if I currently believe in Jesus. No, in the world that I gave you. Um. It doesn't seem like it. Why not? Why don't I? Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like I don't have uh, a way to get the kind of information that might uh, prompt me to make a decision. I just start believing. I think that, like, if there's something, I took all away. Right? Because there are, the all, there are all the methods that God gave us to believe certain things. Right? You cut out a little bit. I didn't get every word. I said I took away all the methods that God gave you to know certain things. Do you think that I am allowed to kind of uh, utilize Christian premises here to say that uh, at least on Christianity, God gave other methods besides the ones you took away? I took away all the different kinds of revelations. I mean, does he have another way? An, an angel could appear to me. Isn't that personal revelation? Yeah, he ruled that out. No. Oh, I didn't know you'd rule that out. My bad, um, Albedo. You take rule out special and right. personal and what's the Bible yeah. one? Oh, right, whatever you want to call that. It's fine. Yeah, I took away all the ways that God has ever given revelation. Now what? That you don't believe in Jesus. Like, you might be able to come to, like, a God belief of some kind or maybe a different... Yeah. Um, I didn't, like... In, in this um, in this scenario, did was Jesus a, a real person who, like, lived 2,000 years ago? Um... Yeah, I'll say the record got destroyed, though. Oh. <clears throat> well, because like I'll, there's no Bible, so. Right. I'll bet I'm curious. What was what's like your um, justification for why you believe in God? Because I heard you had an argument that I'm not aware of. Uh, I have part of it formalized. I can give that to you, but you'll have to wait till the end of this conversation. Sure. Okay. Um, I guess like the point I'm trying to make is like you have certain beliefs about what God is and does and whatever in the world because of like the things that He gave you to have those beliefs. Um, and those are going to be like the things that you would search up and down, like the room. That if they're not in there, you have reasons to suspect they either don't exist or He doesn't want you to know. Right. Uh, so, <clears throat> oh, I want to say you... that it's... Yeah. Go ahead. I was just asking if you're asking me a question, but it's not like you're about to clarify that. <clears throat> so, I want to say that then it's either... Con it's Is it more or less consistent with atheism that that exists? Or more or less consistent with theism that that exists? I don't know what you're asking. What's the that? <laughs> what is it? evil, bro, man? <laughs> the thing we think is more about. precise about like the degree of consistency with stuff because that's kind of a like generally something's just either inconsistent or it's consistent right it's not like a degreed property so i think you might want to clarify it's more it shares more like uh light uh like a probability right is that the better way to put it greater confirmation yeah probably so you might want to say like uh I think like there's an idea of like strength of expectation that is basically what you're getting at. Like what's more expected or less expected. I think I would use that kind of Yeah. Um Dan, I wanna say that that's just more consistent with atheism. Because in every form of atheism, you couldn't know that. But if that's not true of theism. following joe i didn't know you were talking to me um what are you trying to say i said that 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 as an unnecessary evil you know you think that that's like oh you know what it is and it's not obviously it's not a contradiction it just contradicts what god is can anybody else hear up video he's like he's robotic he's breaking out here i can yeah you're kind of breaking up there albedo yeah, I'll be going through the country now, so I'll use signal for the next like five or seven minutes. Um, 
Saul, you want to take over? Because I know you know what I'm saying here. So, sort of. Well, I was I was tracking some of this. You're saying like, uh, wait, what? Can you just tell me the thing that you're saying is more consistent or less consistent? What, what is the what is like the sort of data? You can. You wouldn't be able to know unnecessary evils under any form of atheism because they uh-huh. don't exist at all. And then okay. under his view, some, you could know them in some versions of. Them. Yeah. Okay. Why, why wouldn't uh, unnecessary, as you say, evils exist well, in atheism? I mean, the weird thing is, like, well, yeah, that's. I think that he's just saying, like, suppose you take that view that uh, um, you could just atheism tell you. is going to... Okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were... I, thought you were, I, thought you were yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, really. Has goal. Yeah, it sounds like what he's saying is that naturalism doesn't have a goal, and so if you're understanding goods in terms of teleology, then it's going to be excluded under naturalism, or something like because it's un- it's being definitionally defined as like fundamentally unguided, and so I think he's saying like if you have an understanding of good and evil which is interpreted by, like, teleology, then that's just going to be missing. Um, but I think what he's saying is that, like, needless suffering is compatible with, like, some forms of theism. He said, so he said no that in chat, he said no, that's not what he's saying. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was only getting bits and pieces of it, man. I, I apologize. Okay, so he's saying that, yeah, right, right, right. So you're saying it's, like, consistent with some forms of theism that there's needless evil or suffering. Because uh, God could even tell you that, and it would still be consistent with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the other part of it was you were saying they wouldn't be consistent with naturalism. I guess that's what I was trying to do. That. So, uh, okay, yeah. Wait, so what is it that like? Um, I don't like. So the thing that's more expected on naturalism is um, is a uh, moral nihilism, I guess. Wait, what would that be? I mean, I don't, really, I don't really totally get it, because it seems to me like even if uh, there aren't any instances, let's say, like, naturalism's true. Can you hear me now? Or we're, yeah, you're better. Yeah. Okay. How could you know un- unnecessary, which just means there isn't a reason for evil, however you're understanding evil, under atheism? If evil well, could be a what, thing like... Yeah, couldn't they just all be if evils? Evil, if there's a th- yeah, they all could be. I'm saying, well, some evils are caused by people, so they're not, you know, they they have, like, a reason behind them. Someone did it. Well, yeah. well, I don't know. If that's the kind of reason you mean, like, I thought we were talking about, like, morally sufficient reason or something like that, like some kind of, like, moral justificatory kind of reason. No, those are the evils they want to say aren't evils. I'm Maybe the ones that it's like, we don't know how it got okay, here, yeah, we don't yeah. know why it occurred. Wouldn't this be easy? Those are ones that have no reasons. Like unexplained, you mean? Like they're brutal. Uh, okay, no, I used a very specific thing. I said there is no reason. Reason. So just unjustified. Yeah, you can go unjustified. That's fine. Okay, are you saying that I'm unjustified? Yeah, like, evil? What I was trying to say is that, like, just because a person has like a motivational reason to like, like, I want your money, so I love you, right? That wouldn't be like a sort of. Uh, that explains it, doesn't it? Just that occurrence, right, right, right. But that's why I was just asking you if you were talking about like explanation or uh, that kind of thing. So, because that would just mean that like you're talking about brute fact, right? You're talking about unexplained. Evil. Yeah. Whatever this thing is, so for mean, atheists, those things are unexplained. Well, but wait, hold on. I don't understand. Yeah, hold on. I'm how sorry. could it? How could it? How could it be explained go. by reason? <laughs> if, it, if, if what we think, like, if they use that example, like a deer is like dying in the woods, and you want to say that was needless. And there was no people or any agents to cause it. It wasn't for a reason, right? Just yeah, but it would still be explained. The, the occurrence would be explained. I want to say I specifically said it wasn't for a reason. You can understand those words, right? right? Are non evils for just a reason? I- just to kind of bring some parity to this, are non evils for a reason, Albedo? In the view you're, you're describing? Are non evils for a reason? Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, like, like, it's like eating something that it likes to eat. Is that, a, does, that, is that, a, does that have the kind of reason you're trying to describe? Yeah, but those are morals. If we're taking that to be evil. Whoa. Maybe it's easier to write it in like like pro, like probability terms. Okay, like, uh, I think you mean like, no. he just means intentions. I think that's what he, well, he was getting at. Like, so if some being intends to rob you, that's like the you mean like a sort of uh, intentional explanation, right? Right. Do you think that everything is a moral property? No. 
I'm just trying to get at what you're talking about when you say reason here in this context. Like, I guess you mean like an intentional... I mean, didn't cause it. Uncaused is what you mean? An agent did not an agent. cause it. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. We're missing some words, man. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I know. I'm, just, I'm talking slow, so I, use, I, I understand it might be cutting in and out. It should be okay now. I feel like this are, you might want to like right, get the argument done. I feel like it's a lot really unclear, but... I don't have an argument. I just started talking about this. Okay, so we're saying like we're talking about things that lack sort of agent caused or like intentional explanations. So if that's like if that works for you, right? Because like, I think that's roughly similar. Because if you want to be able to say explain, you're talking like explained in terms of the intention of an agent or like directly caused by an agent. But also, yeah. if there's a deer dying somewhere, right, Albedo, you're calling that an evil. Um, if the deer's not dying somewhere, is that a good? Like if the deer's like prospering, thriving. Yeah, I think a lot of people might say that. Yeah. Is it a moral good? Sure. Okay. So that doesn't have an explanation either, right? Or reason. I think. Only if it was caused by God, yes. Right. Yeah, that would also be um, okay. good for no reason. <laughs> I also don't get, like, Albedo, I mean, what is... It's just to go from, like, I don't know, I, never mind. Albedo, what is the point you're trying to make? That under atheism, you couldn't know those things because there's nothing to explain what that is. It's like asking for a thing that doesn't exist. Is you couldn't know um, you, on atheism, you couldn't know that there are like um, evils that aren't explained by the intentions of an agent. If if there wasn't an agent there to do it, yeah. yeah. Um, I have to think about that for a second. Just, just think if you think that, that like just imagine a scenario where these only these events occur and we call it an evil. A rock falls on Bambi's head and Bambi dies, and that's evil. There's no yeah, that's And then they're like and then you're asking for the the agent that did that. Yeah, but isn't that just natural evil and then you're just like because you're presumably like the moral evils on an atheist picture where there are some agents they're just not a god right mm -hmm. there there's going to be uh, reasons quote unquote as you're using the term for those evils but then not for the natural evil right is that the idea correct okay so basically on atheism like on this on this like construal of what counts as a reason all the natural evils are like i don't know gratuitous or needless or whatever un unexplained by reason and but, the, but all the moral evils are explained all, all of them could be explained by an agent under theism. And they could not yeah. under atheism. Okay, so but like, let's just grant asking, If you're someone who's asking, hey, is that thing more consistent with that, as in, like, is there a reason for it? Which one can affirm it? Uh, oh, well, yeah. The theist could say, I mean, based on this whole setup, right, like, they're the, they're the ones that are in... They could, they could appeal to something in order to affirm Yeah, they're the only yeah. ones. Right. Okay, but that's then, why I said but then where are you going? Yeah, it, yeah. But where expected, are you going from there? It's understand. more expected that's unnecessary under theism because it's the only theory that even allows for it. That it's... It's more expected that it's what under theism? That it's explained? Explained or that by it's, it's <laughs> Yeah, yeah, 100%, I agree. Okay, but like then... Yeah, yeah but then where are you using this? Yeah, that's like... Sure. That's why it makes it more likely. <laughs> it, it makes sorry. It makes theism more likely. No. Oh, well, I think guys like it, 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 it's like you guys took no, 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 I, no, no, no. Look, I'm just trying to get clear on what you're saying. So yes, under theism, right? It's more likely or more expected that it has a reason. It's just a pro evidential problem of evil. If you don't understand like what the what it's what that <laughs> argument attempts to show, I don't like. Why am I having I to explain this to you? It t attempts to show that we have these kinds of evils. I think that it's more like it's more likely under theism than atheism. So more likely wait, that theism wait. is more. It's more likely that theism is false. That's the that's where you're going. It, that is the conclusion of the evidential right, problem right, of evil, okay. isn't it? Is that, okay, I didn't know that all you were doing was trying to represent the evidential. This, I just said that. I just yeah. Said okay. That. I got you. I understand. He's, yeah, you're just, he's just giving the... Okay. Wait, is Sully a, a theist, too, or...? Sully is a precept theist, yeah. No, I'm an atheist. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm sorry. Okay. 
But, okay, yeah, fair enough. I mean, I, didn't, I thought, <clears throat> I'm sorry, like I thought before that this was something sort of related to it rather than just like an account of it, because, yeah, sure, like we can grant that like um, certain evils could only be sort of explained in the way that you're talking about on theism, uh, but it's like the, the construal that you gave is still compatible with like a god exists, but there is needless um, stuff. I already said that. For, yeah, I said right. That. And so then if you, if you set it up that way, right, we say, like, well, we found some instance of needless suffering, right? Like, if that can be expected on certain God hypotheses, it's not going to be evidence against them, right? You, oh, my God. Or is this more of, like, a, you're trying to Look, group them together? Let's, let's, let's just stipulate, because there's obviously more than this, that there's 50 variations of theism and 50 variations of atheism, okay? Maybe that's not the, quite the right amount. Yeah, I'm just trying to do something that makes it more clear what I'm trying to say. Okay. Under all 50 versions of atheism, it will all be unnecessary because there aren't an agent to explain. Under some versions of theism, it may be true that there isn't an agent to explain it, but there are other ones that it is able to be. So it it just has more... It has the... The, the idea is that if you see... It's the same has thing as the little prior's no argument. Instance. It's, right. it's, it's, it's basically just saying that if you see, so you have these these hundred possible worlds, like let's say, fifty of them are theists, fifty of them are atheists. Under fifty, under all fifty atheist ones, um, there will be at least some gratuitous evil, uh, that kind, or at least there can be. Um, and then under, let's say, only half of the theist ones, there can be these kind of events called gratuitous evil. Well. When you see gratuitous evil, you should update your priors to eliminate those theist ones where there's no gratuitous evil. And so then yeah. you, you end up, oh, atheism is more probable. I have right. Right. problems with that argument I mean, um, of yeah. this kind, which is that I think, like, pertinent to the conversation that was happening earlier, I think the idea that we're in a position to, like, very confidently assert that we see instances of, of quote-unquote gratuitous evil is very hard, is very hard to say. Um, like the fawn in the forest example. I, I agree. Things that, like, I don't think we should be so flippant to say all these things are gratuitous evils. Because, like, yeah, uh, yeah. how to say it? F Fawn in the forest example, you have two possibilities. Either it's, like, a necessary, um, it's, like, some kind of, like, unfortunate but necessary causal antecedent to some good. You could say, oh, maybe that's very unlikely, or maybe we set up a hypothetical where, like, the, the, the fawn dying in the forest is, like, a causal dead end. Or you talk about how it could be, like, the duration is unnecessary or something like that. Um, I don't think that help, I don't think that assuages the issue because in the past, um, you're going to have goods that might entail the fawn dying in the forest for three hours or something like that. Um, and that entailment is going to be like you know I don't know butterfly effect like you know Jim gave to the poor, therefore Bambi dies in the forest for three hours. <laughs> um, and I guess the idea there is that the you know Bambi dying in the forest for three hours is in either direction, could be involved in some good. And actually spelling out whether or not we have credence to think it is or isn't ends up getting very hard, because we're talking about this, this event being part, part of one of these kind of causal, causal series that extend arbitrarily far into the past and future. And so you're in a very weird epistemic issue there. Yeah, I mean, I think the issue with running it almost like as a low priors kind of setup is that um, I just think that like the objection about the sort of like principle of indifference will like go through that it's sort of it could you could be accused of arbitrarily applying it in one along one axis where it's not really the like I think that the evidential argument is like run best to just say um, we have a certain god hypothesis and it's not that like the existence of evil or even the existence of a certain amount of evil is like going to rule it out right like deductively, but it's going to count as evidence against that hypothesis because um, what you would expect on that hypothesis would be something else. Well, it's quizzical, though, because once we get into, like, the certain hypotheses, I'm unsure why any particular instance of evil is going to be unexpected. Um, right? Because to say that any particular instance of evil is, is unexpected on the hypothesis you have to show kind of some kind of incongruence with that evil and the hypothesis and that, that that's yeah, kind but, of what's but, exactly but, what it's yeah. like 
the idea is like if you're engaging with it like uh, at the evidential level where you're not so like so basically like you want to say there's no like one piece of evidence that couldn't be uh, accommodated right like it could be accommodated under the hypothesis but like if you have to do more work to accommodate it that's like invoking some kind of skeptical theist strategy or something else right then you're just then you're lowering the price right I don't know and why so invoking skeptical theism is going to lower your priors there. Well, I mean, it seems to me that, like, if you had been working with the skeptical theist uh, strategy from the jump, like, when you first started, like, making predictions, yeah, then... Yeah, why wouldn't you? Well, like, what I'm saying is then, like, you're, you're, you're putting yourself in the dark, <laughs> so to speak, in terms of your ability to actually do that, right? Like, you'd have to say, like, there, we can't really make an... There's, we can't really form an expectation. Because we don't have, because our epistemic access is so limited with respect to like well, moral truths and God's reasons. That skeptical like, theists don't think that there there are skeptical theism isn't isn't the views isn't the, isn't the thesis that there are um, moral reasons we don't have access to. It's that there could be. Well, I think that what it is is there's there there is usually a commitment that there are reasons even if we don't know what they are. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm not really sure why that's a problem. Like what? Well, what I'm what I'm saying I is think that you're like, gonna get you're gonna get like how to say it like you're gonna get very similar. Like so, think of an instance of evil has like an event. This it's just an event which, um, conditioned on this theory, is going to be involved with some good. That's the that's the commitment. Um, it's kind of opaque to you how it's involved, but um, it's gonna be if the theory is true. Well, um, that kind of, and, the, and uh, like, you know, quoting, there's an explanation whether or not we know it. And that kind of thing is going to be true for a lot of, like, very, like, really simple empirical facts, um, just given, like, the limitations of our ability to make big computers. You know, like, the, mo the particular motions of um, a molecule that's over, I think it's, like, five atoms are completely unpredictable. It's like, you know, we can make probabilistic generalizations about it, but in terms of what, like, what it actually does, it just, the simulations just don't work. Um, but we're perfectly happy in saying, like, oh yeah, our, our theories are generally correct. It's just, you know, outside the limits of our predictive capacities to, you know, give, a, give an account to why the yeah, molecule but, moves this way. Yeah, but see, the, the, the issue seems to be that if we say um, we can't really form an expectation, right, then like, Whatever, so basically, this, this is why I think the skeptical theist strategy has, has like a big problem, right? It's because when you add that in, now it's like, well, whatever data that we find uh, is accommodated, right? And if, and if whatever data you find is accommodated, then well, it's unclear like, what's whatever, being it's fixed whatever data, your theory, right? Then it's like your theory well, is so open that it's not saying much. Anymore. I mean, so whatever data you find in terms of like, the balance of good and evil in the world is going to be accommodated. I agree with that. So that makes the, that makes the theory kind of unfalsifiable. Um, well, it's not so much that I it's unfalsifiable; it's that it like doesn't have content related to those things, really. Like, because if it did, then it would make some kind. Of well, yeah, but the, the theory isn't supposed to be an explanation for those events. So, it ha not having content for them is not really a theoretical problem for that that particular that particular yeah, formulation of the hypothesis. Yeah, but it basically, it becomes like a sort of like, at least at the meta-ethical level, you're saying like, yeah, we're like realists, we're like espousing that there are moral truths and, and so on, and, but like, other than that, like, what they are, we don't know. And so, you know, basically I, like, it's unclear what, you are calling, what, are you what are you referring to, right? You're saying like, there's some fact with this structure, and like, other than that, like, you know, it could be something, we, well, I mean, look, if we're, how... Not really. How I mean, so if you're talking... Right? If we're talking about a particular view, you know, like a, a Thomist is going to say, I'm committing to the idea that there are moral goods. Uh, moral goods consist in uh, the fulfillment of the proper end of some nature. They're telling you exactly what they mean. They can tell you what it looks like. They can even give you, like, identifiable instances of the event, specifically to do with, like, agent causation. Because on their view, agent causation is going to be kind of singular. It's not going to be entangled in the same way um, with... Uh, like these kind of broad sweeping causal systems in the way that natural evil or natural good is going to be. Um, 
And they might have to say something like, well, we can't really give you a very good explanation of natural evils and natural goods, but, um, you know, so what? Our theory isn't the theory of natural evils and natural goods. I mean, for instance, a Thomas could ostensibly just say they don't even believe there are such things as natural evils, per se. Like, um, there's no accountability in nature to not crush Bambi, as an example. Um, there's also not really, like, a... Uh, improper endingness to Bambi's getting crushed by a rock or something like that. You know, Bambi's an animal, not a rational, not, not a rational, uh, not a rational being. Um, and so his nature doesn't work the same way. You know, like you could give like a constitutivist, like a constitutivist kind of like pseudo Kantian spin to, uh, to mystic ethics if you wanted to. Yeah. I mean, I suppose like, I don't see that it's limited to natural evil. Um, because it seems to me like, I don't know, you could construct these things into, I don't know, you could talk about moral evil, like you could talk about evil done by humans and so on. Um, and it uh, seems like... The moral evil done by humans is going to have an explanation. And, yeah, it, right. it will, but it'll have an explanation. But like, the point is that, you know, whether or not some, like, there's no, there's no level of evil that's like... That there's, a, there's no expectation about whether or not, like, all the people in the world will, will do, like, horrendous evils, like, every day, or, like, no one will do anything, right? That's generated. Because... Why is there any like, expectation? I don't, I don't think that theory, I don't think theories in meta, I don't think any theory in meta talks about that kind of expectation. Does it? It's not, it's not about, no, 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 of course not, but it's not to say that a theory of meta ethics is expected to make, that. that's, that's not what I'm getting at, right? It's the theory okay. that, like, God is, um, like, we're talking about the, the hypothesis of this kind of God with these kinds of characteristics, right? Like, an all-good, yeah. all-powerful, all-knowing God, and so on. And we're talking about, um, you know, that sort of hypothesis for the creation of a world, right? Like, what kind of world is expected? And what I'm saying is that, like, with respect to the amount or degree or type of evil, if you take this, like, skeptical theist route, that's not going to be included in, in this kind of hypothesis. Some other kind of theist might say, yeah, look, my... My God, hypothesis does make a prediction about that, and what we see. Yeah. Is so that, here's right? here's what I'd say. You could probably you could you could probably say when it comes to this, um, if you accept the skeptical theist kind of route here, the um, uh, how to say it, the consequent structure of the world to God's creative act is kind of ambiguous, and so you're not going to be able to use any particular observations, um, at least of the moral sort. Um, to infer whether or not God exists, right? It's not going to, like, you know, they're being good, they're being, well, okay, so they're being a particular good, and they're being um, a particular evil or something like that isn't going to count as evidence, because that's part of the structure of the world, and the structure of the world is opaque um, to, the, to the skeptical theist. But, they might not have, um, they might not even think that that's a really good way of arguing for theism. You know, like, uh, one route you can go, um, that Thomas does that uh, works just fine, whether or not he's a skeptical theist, is um, the existence of good at all, in his view, is kind of inexplicable without there being um, about, without there being God, because the existence of good for Thomas is the existence of is like the move from actuality to, from potentiality to actuality um, towards a proper end, and the there being there being the conjunction of um, uh, actuality and there being a final cause for the motion in the universe is, on Thomas's view, like inexplicable without there being a god. And so, if your if your idea of good is sort of bound up in there being these um these sort of uh, I don't know teleonomic ends that things have, uh, then Thomas is going to say you're committed to theism, probably at least. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, like I think that. This might have been the issue earlier with why I wasn't, I wasn't really understanding why Albedo was taking the strategy of, like, saying that the teleonomic goods, like, wouldn't exist on atheism and so on. The, the idea is supposed to be, like, well, we, we have the data, right? And then we have uh, atheism and theism, but, like, once we go there, like, the data is going to be interpreted differently, right? So if we're, if we're analyzing the data with respect to, like, a Christian, some form of Christianity, then we're going to interpret it as, like, realist, good, and evil, and so on, right? Like, we're going to assign you know, the additional predicates that come along with that and analyze it that way. Yeah. Whereas, like, sure, like, when we look at it under the atheist view, maybe it doesn't, it doesn't come out as an evil, you know, but it's like, that's just how we do the analysis, you know what I mean? Like, we do it conditionally. 
Yeah, I agree. So I, that's one of the reasons why I, I like hate all the problem of evil arguments. They seem like kind of kind of pointless. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, I think the evidential argument is stronger. I still don't think it's like the best argument for atheism. The evidential argument is stronger. I mean, the the Elpo yeah. the, the Elpo is like you know pretty pretty right. resoundingly not sound. Um, I'm sorry, not it's just I not guess, well, well, people not valid. But <laughs> there's definitely ways in which it can be formed and it's valid. And you know, by some people's lights, it's probably sound. But it's just not a like compelling argument because it can be resisted so easily and. The evidential one yeah. is harder, and you can see how it like it drives people into these different strategies to account. Yeah. Elbow. Oh, well, sorry. You know how um. You know how some people like um. I know Luke Burns has raised examples like this, but how some theists will give examples of how, um, you know, there are cases where, um, like, self and horse style objections will undercut cases where we seem to clearly have evidence against, um, evidence for theism, like when, like, let's say if, like, um, all the Bible verses were written in the stars and the sky, things like that. You know those sorts of cases they bring up? Or I don't know if Sully's still here. Do you mean like how God tattooed his name in our DNA? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah things like, yeah, so did you hear what I said? No. Okay, so I'm, I'm sorry, saying, I'm like, so no, it's fine. I was saying, you know how, um, like, people like Luke Barnes will bring up cases where, like, um, they believe stalking horse objection um, will uh, kind of undercut cases where we clearly have evidence for deism, like if God were to, or if there were a case where, like, um, the stars in the sky would spell out Bible verses, or if, like, um, <laughs> They reflect like on certain particles, um, like these certain like things that are related to the Bible or in the particles or things like that. Um, you know those sorts of examples. Yeah. So, um, on with respect to um, like various theodicies that uh, theists will give, you could like could you not give very similar examples where we those sort of theodicies could undercut cases where most people would say we clearly have evidence against theism. Uh. So, like, which, so you, which the Odyssey are you talking about? Yeah, so, like, uh, like you could say, like, uh, skeptical theism, or like, that could be one example, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't think skeptical theism is a the Odyssey, but um, there's, so, so, like, there's definitely, like, epistemic worries that follow from a skeptical theism, you know? And, uh, yeah, like, they can, they can undercut a lot, you know? Like, the way that Stephen Law sets up his Pandora's box thing is to challenge, like, is to present it as, like, uh, external world skepticism and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know if it's, again, like, I don't think things that that's, I don't think it entails something that strong, right? But, like uh, that, but like, like, look, I don't really like, see like, it as a, yeah, oh, sorry, I was just gonna say, I don't really see this as a consequence of, like, the kinds of theodicies that are presented to, like, the logical problem of evil, which are usually, like, things like greater good, soul building, free will, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, I'm also thinking, like, um, examples that are, like, uh, like say like we found ourselves in a world um, that kind of was just like ultimately like all like constitutive of basically infinite endless pain torture and suffering things like that so, like everything you observe is just pain torture suffering um and that's just like every that's like like every item of everybody's life um from what you've observed um it seems like that's the case where a lot of these will say um maybe like charitably that yes in that sort of world we would have evidence against theism yeah, I mean, I would agree with you. I think that, and again, that's like, that's the flaw I was just pointing out with like, if you take the skeptical theist route, your theory just really makes no predictions about what you would expect. And so like, infinite suffering would be just as expected as like, you know, 50-50 or all, everything's good yeah. or whatever. But then again, like the theists really have to say this, right? Because I don't know if they're, or maybe not, not all of them, right? But by some like Christian's lights, mm-hmm. like somebody can have a very, very short life and then go to hell. And so for that person, like it would seem that just everything was suffering. Right. Yeah, yeah. Do you think the Troyer will let him know it was Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, we gotta say, like, Albedo, Albedo needs to hook up with Liz Jackson. The way she looks at him, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's got a different last name. 
Liz Jackson? She got married. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she got married. Yeah, to Detroyer. So, uh, Liz, Liz Reagan. <laughs> it already happened. Detroyer is just too embarrassed to tell us about it. One day, Liz Jackson's going to drop a picture of a conspicuously familiar-looking penis, and we're just going to know. <laughs> Can't believe it. He, he did it. The Mad Men. The dog. I gotta give Joe my buckets argument at some point. The bucket, the buckets argument is just killer. What's the buckets argument? So, like, I've reconfigured this this to work for like seventeen different things at this point. But like the the illustrative device that I keep employing is, uh, you know, you have a bucket with balls numbered one to a hundred, and then you have another bucket with balls numbered one to a thousand, right? And then I blindfold you and you draw a ball, but you don't know which bucket you're drawing from. And then yeah, when you look at it, it's a fifty. Right. And so then it's like, you can show it more likely it came from bucket A. Right. Yeah. Uh, with less number of balls. Yeah. And so I keep using this. It's really good for like countering the fine tuning argument. And there's an argument you can just give from like, if somebody grants that like it, the empirical data underdetermines whether theism or naturalism are true. Right. And then they grant that like, oh, that's funny. So could, hold on. So you're saying that you like, you were just ranting everything about the initial constants. So. Life supporting initial constants can happen in an ar like an arbitrarily large number of ways on theism because God is omnipotent. Um, That's correct. Yeah. But life preserving constants can only happen in a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of ways. You know, a bucket with like ostensibly maybe one marble in it labeled us, um, and everything everything else is in the, the theist bucket is us prime, us prime, prime, us prime, prime, etc. You pull out the us marble, you should guess if you should guess atheism. I have some yeah, objections yeah. to this, although I actually have to go for like three minutes. Apologies. Wait, Mark, you've been you've been thinking about my bucket. Okay, yeah, I definitely want to hear it. Yeah, sorry, I, I'll be right back. Sorry. Wait, so wait, what? Um, you're saying that um, so this is about fine tuning. Is what you said? Argument against. So, I originally, I originally didn't set it up as an argument for fine tuning, or again, it's basically a re. It's a it's a no U on fine tuning, but like I realized that later and. The original way I set it up was to just do it based on like empirical data, right? So it's like the data of our experiences, right? If you think that that's compatible with naturalism and theism, right? So you don't, so this would be somebody who doesn't think that we already have some piece of empirical data that rules out one or the other, right? Uh -huh. And then they say, okay, look, God could create all of the data sets that are consistent with naturalism plus additional data sets where like if you had this kind of empirical experience, like uh, it would be inconsistent with naturalism, like. Uh, finding yourself in the genuine presence of God or something like that, right? And uh, and so on that, you can do the same thing with the buckets. And you can say, like, well, since we have a data set that's consistent with both buckets, it's probably from the smaller bucket. Wait, I don't... I don't... Um, I don't feel like... Could, it, could they not just, like, say that, um, that there's some data sets God would be more likely to create? And... Yeah, so there is, like, there is, like, a... Uh, a uniform probability distribution is kind of assumed, right? But then that would get into like lowering the prior if you like specify some non-uniform distribution. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think you can. Well, I mean, well, yeah. See, what, I, I agree that would lower the prior, but um, do you think it only works if you apply like um, like indifference or whatever? Does that argument work yeah. if they just think that there's a thing that is unnatural? No, if they think that there's no, I mean, some... So if, someone thinks that if, if someone thinks there's already data that's inconsistent with naturalism, it obviously doesn't work. Yeah, but a lot of them do think The question is, like, show me what that is and give me the argument why it's inconsistent. So, I... And we're going to start talking about the Shroud of Turin, bro. Let's go. <laughs> So, was the bucket thing specifically in regards to fine tuning, or is it more general? It's more general, but I do think it works in, in an application against fine tuning. Because then, the way, basically, the way I would run it is to say the numbers represent uh, combinations of physical constants, and like what ends. The reason that a certain combination of physical constants ends up in the naturalism bucket is because it generates a life permitting universe on naturalism, and the reason so, it ends up in the theist bucket is because it permits a life permitting universe on theism. Right. So, like any set of physical constants 
under which God could create life in the universe are going to be in the, the theism bucket, right? And only the constants that are going to be life permitting on naturalism will be in the naturalism bucket. Oh, right. So, like, uh, sorry, am I, am I okay? Yeah. So, first of all, I think you're talking about like literal numbers as in actual cardinalities. But I mean, if you do that, I think the you know the quote unquote numbers are going to be the same, more or less, no matter what. Like you're just going to end up with some uncountable infinity on either natural or naturalism or non-naturalism. I mean, that could still be bad for the fine uh, for the fine tuning uh, defender, but it doesn't seem like that's yeah, the right way to go. Yeah, because then it just comes out equal, right? But no, I understand uh, like the concern about like the sets being uncountably infinite in the same. Wouldn't it be more inscrutable than equal? Uh, I mean, it would. I mean. It would probably be something like undefined or something. I, 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 yeah, I, exactly. I, I could, you know, I, I could, I could think of a number of ways to approach that. But, uh, but before we talk about that, uh, so I mean, I guess there's a, a couple other things that jumped out to me. So uh, first of all, I mean, the fine tuning person might agree that the, you know the prior probability of a universe having life permitting constants uh, is lower uh, on theism than naturalism. Uh, but, uh, you know, because perhaps there's a more, quote-unquote, number of ways for the, you know, one of those to be realized on theism, theism or the universe to be realized in non life permitting ways on theism than on naturalism. But that's not exactly the probability in question. Probably isn't, what's the, what's the probability that the universe has life, life permitted constants on theism rather than naturalism? It's rather the conditional probability. What's the conditional probability of life permitting, uh, of, uh, of the universe having, uh, sorry, of the universe being designed given that there's life, uh, on theism yeah, but, uh, relative to, uh, versus naturalism. So you yeah, have to... They, they, they both work out in, in favor. And if the buckets actually do are different uh, cardinalities, I guess, is the way that I originally set this up. Right? It, would, it would be uh, the conditional probability is still higher. For both. So if I, say, if I ask it like this, like, I could ask you, what's the probability of drawing a 50 from the bucket with 100 balls? But I could also ask you, like, what's the actual probability of which... Which bucket sure. this ball came from now that I've drawn? No, no, yeah, no, I, I, I acknowledge that. But I mean, the next thing they're going to say is that we shouldn't, like, when we're talking about physical probabilities in order to sort of judge hypotheses, judge between hypotheses, we probably only want to, uh, you know, restrict ourselves to talking about ones that come from some well-defined mathematical model. Otherwise, basically, all bets are off. Uh, in particular, you know, if there's, if it looks like the constants of, of the universe are, sorry, the, the laws of physics are determined by some, you know, set of constants that ha fall in some, like, natural range that's easy to parameterize, then we should assign some parameterization over those con that range um, and judge probabilities based on that. But we shouldn't just like bring in like totally free form universes in which you know you know anything goes. Like, and I think the reason that they would say that uh, is that it would basically be impossible to confirm almost anything because you can all you know for any phenomenon, there's more ways of explaining it by means of some you know insane you know theistic non physics you know abiding cockamamie ex explanation than there is via, you know, some mechan mechanistic process. So, for example, I mean, let me give you an example. You know, let's say there, you know, I, ro I roll it, I flip a coin ten times and I say it's heads, okay? Or, and it's heads each time. So, uh, let's say I say, and, and we know, you know, there's a history of uh, me using, uh, weight, you know, weighted coins in order to cheat at whatever game we're playing. Do you say, Oh, this seems like great evidence. The fact that I came up heads ten times in a row—that seems like great evidence uh, that uh, you rigged. You know, you rigged it. And I say, no, no, no. Listen, I mean, there's an infinite number of ways the universe could have been such that it's likely to uh, get flip to flip ten times in a row, uh, 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 and an infinite number of ways in which it's not likely to get flipped. Uh, you know, an infinite number of ways in which it's you know likely to come up any other pattern. So clearly. You know, the fact that it landed ten times, heads ten times in a row, isn't uh, really evidence that I cheated. You know, there's an infinite number of ways uh, the universe could have been such that I, you know, I, I got that outcome, but I didn't cheat. Well, I think another another way of maybe trying to run the same idea would be to say, like, okay, look, this sort of like range of physical constants that people talk about, and like where they generate these weird probabilities that are used in the fine tuning argument, is to say, like, here's like a range of the parameters that doesn't sort of break our equations like that they appear in in the physics right so it's like mm -hmm. you know if the constants were uh you know outside this range then that actually causes like mathematical problems okay right so we're going to say okay those are the, the sort of like natural conditions yes. and uh you know given naturalism on, on, an only, on only a very small slice of those is like possible or something like that right to start out but then we can also say like well throw out our physical equations, right? Like, we could do completely different physical equations if these were true, or we could just, like, have a non-physical world that isn't, doesn't have constants at all, 
right? So we get an even larger sort of infinity of possible worlds that life could exist in under theism, right? Like just idealistic worlds, spiritual worlds, sure. electrons in love, all this stuff, right? And so okay, I still think, cool. like, however you carve it up, like, like the God hypothesis is consistent with all these naturalistic worlds in, 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 in one sense, right? Like, at least in terms of, like, the sort of, like, on the ground facts about the about the world, right? It's like if there's a physical world, God could have created that physical world for every physical, world, right? But then there are just sure, these, there are just many many more worlds that He could have created. Yeah, but I mean, it, it just seems like uh, that reasoning can can be applied to essentially all scientific confirmation. Like, no matter what experiments you think, you know, demonstrate, you know, whatever laws of physics you believe in, like force equals mass time acceleration or whatever. Like, there could there's an infinite number of possible physical theories on which your proposed physical hypothesis is false. But the evidence came up the way it did, right? You know, there's you know there's a hypothetical possible world where f equals ma is false, but for complicated reasons, all of your it's experiments show, yeah, yeah. Agree, that's that just kind of like it's like under determination and um, sort of like the reason why falsificationism was like abandoned. And also, I know I understand that, but like I'm not, so, I, I'm not I mean, sure what, why. Well, yeah. So what I'm trying to get at is that you know, in order to do scientific confirmation, we we it seems hard. All right, sorry. It seems hard to do scientific confirmation if you're not willing to a very, very, very large. You know, uh, I don't exactly know how large, but large proportion of possible physical hypotheses, um, possible you know counterfactual ways the universe could have been, and just stick to ones that are within you know uh, some you know some neighborhood of what we think they actually are. Uh, and in this case, if we do that with fine tuning, then you know we're throwing away most of the worlds where you know. Uh, where God could have created life without any kind of fine-tuning at all, because the laws of physics are just drastically different and more permissive towards life. Yeah, I guess, I, I don't know. I mean, I understand, I understand the stuff you brought up about the, the, set, the sizes of the sets, but um, so you think that there's something, there's an issue with my argument that's related to this idea that um, we need to restrict, like, the range of what we're considering? Uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, like, uh, you know, if we have, so, like, I, I think the idea is, so, so first of all, I, I just, I should, parent, I should have parenthesized uh, by saying at first that I actually go, agree with a similar objection than, to the one that you're raising with your bucket argument, although it's not 100% the same. But what I'm saying is that uh, the fine-tuning defender will probably say something like, uh, you know, when we judge probabilities and we have some well-defined mathematical model by which to, on which to do that, uh, then we should go with that model. Like, and as, as opposed to considering, you know, alternate universes that for which there's no good parameterization. Like, it, you know, it makes sense to to twiddle the laws of physics by changing, you know, the speed of light a little bit. But and it, it makes sense to sort of assign a probability distribution to the, you know, to that twiddling so that it, you know, lands in this region with certain probability and that region with certain other probability. But there's no way to, you know, parameterize all the infinitely complicated possible ways the universe could have been. So that doesn't really tell us anything. We just ha have no choice but to go with this more parameterizable model that physics presents us with when we judge, you know, probabilities. Uh, that's still a yeah, that. front. Sorry? Oh, I was just saying that's very similar to Goff's response. Uh, who's? He's saying Philip Goff. Goff, Philip Goff. Oh, I, oh yeah, no, no I, I don't know him. I, mean, I do think, like, if you're thinking of it like this, like, the way I'm setting it up is, like, okay, it's a random selection from, like, these buckets in this, in, in this example. And you're saying, like, well, look, like, apply, we don't really have any reason to apply a uni uniform prob probability distribution across those. Um, any more reason to do that than just any, any probability distribution, right? Which makes well, sense, I mean, but... Yeah, I would say something stronger, actually, namely that there is no obvious probability distribution. Even, like, even if I wanted to attach a uniform one. I just have no idea how to attach uniform probability distribution over the space of all possible physical laws. Yeah, and I mean, like, uh, no, what, what I was trying to say with, like, the latter half was, like, you could imagine that uh, if there are any physical laws, they have the structure that our physical laws have, let's say, right? And all we're varying on are the constants, something like that, right? But then it's not... Oh, okay. We don't, we don't even have to go to alternative physical laws in the theist case, right? We can just say non-physical life-permitting worlds or something like that, right? So, like, that's how we're still going to end up with more on the other side. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm not 100% sure I understand that. If you're only looking at, you know, laws of physics that are similar to ours, but just with different values of constants, 
Uh, how does yeah, that sure. get Quantum you? Quantum naturalism. Though, okay. Right. right. So how does that get you uh, to an objection to the fine tuning argument, which is that it's unlikely for uh, you know, given, given that constraint that the laws of physics have to be as they are, but just with constants set to different values. How does that get uh, to you know, uh, life being uh, more Im improbable, or as, at least as improbable on theism as on naturalism? Well, it's well. The, so the counter, like the, the sort of conclusion of the response that I'm offering is that like the actual world is more strongly predicted by naturalism because well, there, go ahead. So I conditionalized uh, on yeah. Uh, why is the actual world more strongly predicted by by naturalism? So it's because the um, so again like with this. With this idea that the actual world, so the world we find ourselves in, is the one, uh, I'm sorry, is one of the ones that is consistent with both uh, the naturalistic hypothesis and the theistic hypothesis, right? Like, in terms of the constants, right? So we're saying, like, the fact that life exists in this world, in the actual world, um, <clears throat> is permitted given these constants if naturalism is true and also if theism is true, right? And then we're saying that um, <clears throat> there are worlds that God could have created that don't have life. Now, again, this is like sort of the bare designer, right? It's the bare designer. So we're not, we're not building in preferences here on either side yet, right? In terms of like, oh, does God want a world with life rather than not? It's just like the bare designer hypothesis, right? Because I think once you move away from that, I think the Thoreau's objection is pretty good. And so what I'm saying is that like, there's more available to the designer, right? In terms of, even if you're just looking at worlds with life in them, right? Where he's going to have all the same worlds that could have had life on naturalism that he could pick from, and he's going to have more worlds that are like, you know, supernatural worlds, let's say, right? We're not talking about changing the laws of physics and other physical conditions, but we're just going to say uh, there's nothing physical in these worlds, and yet there's life, right? Oh, uh, I, well, I mean, isn't that, sorry, so isn't that like, just like, so you're, you're imagining he could have chosen values of the parameters that are, to are totally incompatible with life, but created life anyway, because, you know, he just used supernatural yeah. means to sustain them. I mean... Sure. That, I guess I would I say see. that's that's just another way of you know going to you know like I would say in that a, a better way to, another way to describe those universes are ones in which the laws of physics are completely different from what we you know from 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 our own. I mean, there may be in some sense in which they're similar, uh, but I mean, given that he's just like perpetually doing these miracles, like I would say this falls outside the radius of you know closeness to our laws of physics that you know we should be looking at. Like, and, and I think you could say something similar. Uh, about, you know, my example with, you know, uh, the coin flipping 10 times in a row, like, you say that's evidence that I'm rigging it. But, I mean, uh, there, there are many possible worlds where the laws of physics are just exactly like ours. Uh, but I just, you know, for that, there's just like some special carve out to all the laws of physics that say sometimes when I flip a coin 10 times in a row, it always lands heads or something. Like, we presumably want to rule the universes like those out when you know, when we assess the uh, probability of my flipping heads. Uh, and similarly, I think we want to do the same thing when we make this, like, systematic carve-out of the laws of physics uh, to support, you know, for God miraculously sustaining life. Because that's just another case of, like, the, the laws of physics being just, like, way, way, way more complicated and different and non-parameterizable uh, relative to the kinds of things that physicists talk about.